And so All Saints Day is an opportunity for us to step back and acknowledge the grand and glorious work of God through his people to influence his people. Hi, it's Father Jeremiah of Grace Anglican Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina, and today I want to talk about All Saints Day. Right now it's more or less the middle of the month, middle of October. We're moving ever closer toward October 31st and Halloween. And of course, anytime Halloween comes around, people start getting nervous about what is Halloween all about and why do people want to dress up and do all these weird things like trick-or-treating and getting together and having fall festivals. But it's all ultimately related to what happens on the next day, what November 1st is really about, which is All Saints Day. We wouldn't have Halloween if the church didn't have All Saints Day, because Halloween is just simply All Saints Eve. It's the night before All Saints Day, just like you have Christmas Day, and everyone starts celebrating on Christmas Eve in some form or fashion. It, the day is extended into the evening, and so you have Christmas Eve leading into Christmas Day. It's the same with All Saints Day and Halloween. All Saints Day is the day that the main celebration is about, but Halloween all Saints Eve begins ramping up to that celebration. But I don't want to talk about the history of all of that and how all that works together. I've made videos about that, and I'll link both of the videos I've made in the past about that below in the description. If you're curious about that, you can go watch those videos and find out more about the history of the relationship between Halloween and All Saints Day itself. But today, I want to talk about why is All Saints Day important? Why is it important for all I think all Christians to at least acknowledge All Saints Day, to reflect a little bit on All Saints Day and to consider what it is that All Saints Day is about. So as we think about that and get ready to move into that idea of why All Saints Day is important, do those three things that will help this channel to grow and help other people discover what we're doing here at Grace Anglican Church. Hit that like button to let the algorithms know that you enjoy this and people that are like-minded would also enjoy it. Hit the share button. If you enjoy this video, share it with your friends. That way to where they can discover Grace Anglican to discover these things that we're talking about and also hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already and you will be notified of new videos of live streams of any time we post something new here on this channel you'll get notified about it all those things will help us to grow and help other people to discover us and help you to learn more and help you to help us grow of all of our views for our videos it's usually only like 25 to 35 percent of people are actually already subscribed and the Rest of them are people who just kind of randomly discover our videos. So I invite you, if you're someone who just recently discovered this video, hit the subscribe button and watch out for more content and look through some of our other videos. You might find something you enjoy. All Saints Day. Why, why is All Saints Day so important to me and to the church at large? Now, All Saints Day is a day that came into existence a long time ago in the church, and it's shifted around on the calendar. It's not always been on November 1st, and that's where a lot of theories about why it got shifted to November 1st come about, that is connected to ancient pagan religions and whatnot, and really most of that stuff is not true. Most of these things where All Saints Day got started, there was no interactions with any possibility of those pagan religions that might have celebrated something on October 31st. But even beyond that, the historicity of those celebrations in those pagan regions are pretty suspect. There's not really evidence of that until hundreds of years after Christianity was established in that region do we have anything talking about those kinds of celebrations and those kinds of religions having a day about the dead and about the spirit world on October 31st. It's not until after All Saints Day is firmly established that anyone writes down anything about these pagan religions. So, enough about that, though. But why is All Saints Day important, and why do I think you should observe it, whether you're Anglican or Catholic or Orthodox or Lutheran, but even if you're Presbyterian or just Baptist or non-denominational, why should you acknowledge that there is such a thing as All Saints Day? Well, the reason I think you should acknowledge All Saints Day is because, more than likely, you wouldn't be a Christian without some saint who has passed on from this world into the afterlife having influenced you in some way. You see, All Saints Day is about remembering these saints, these past believers who have influenced the church, who have been part of the church and have brought others into the faith. For me, I think of my grandmother. She was a major influence on me being a Christian and living as a Christian. I remember being 
six or seven years old at her house and it was the summer and we were kind of going through a bit of a drought and back then a lot of us depended on growing food in our gardens to help supplement the food that we bought at the grocery stores and our food wasn't growing very well our crops were kind of weak because there hadn't been a lot of water and we all lived off of wells in the ground and those we we're getting afraid were beginning to run low on water because we just hadn't had much rain over the last few months and i remember sitting down with her and her just saying we need to pray for rain we need to pray for god to end this drought soon so that we can grow the crops that we need so that our wells will be replenished with the water that we need to survive and we prayed we spent some time in prayer and i remember in a day or so I mean, we had wonderful rainstorms come through and just saturate the ground so well with water. And it was just an exciting moment to see God respond to all of the saints' prayers, all of the living saints' prayers in that moment. And I look back and that was a key moment in my faith of being encouraged in my faith. And there are many other stories like that about my grandmother of how she helped encourage my faith. And I look back on, on her life. And remember that influence, especially on All Saints Day, to celebrate the work of God through her on my behalf, that she influenced my faith. She encouraged it and she helped it to grow. But there's many other saints. I've known many saints who have died in recent years who influenced my faith, who played a role in encouraging me, who played a role in praying with me and helping me in my faith, helping me to understand my faith better. But beyond even that, there's all kinds of saints in my own family history saints i've never met saints i don't know anything about ancestors who were believers that without them having been believers that line of believers may have been broken and who knows how things would have worked out for me today without there being baptist ministers and methodist ministers and anglican priests in my family history that all of them play a role trickling down to today that they made splashes that then had reverberations forward throughout history reaching all the way down to me and influencing my faith because they were believers who encouraged their children to be believers, who then encouraged the grandchildren and great-grandchildren beyond to be believers. Now, was every single person in my family line a Christian? I don't know. But I know that there were Christians throughout my family history, and my wife's family is the same way. She comes from a family full of Christians. For generations back, there were missionaries in her family who went all over the world proclaiming the gospel, and that trickles down and affects her faith and influences how she thinks about the faith, that she has been influenced by all these past believers who were part of her family, friends of her family who influenced them, and therefore, through those influences, trickle down and affect her faith today. And of course, all of this is part of God's grand plan. All of it is in his control. And so my faith comes from God's working in me through the Holy Spirit he has given me. That yes, my faith exists not because of any power in myself, but because God gave me that faith. But part of the way he gave me that faith and continues to give me that faith is through his ordering of history, through the redemptive work of Christ way back, nearly 2,000 years ago into the past, reverberating forward and influencing different people and bringing people to faith, that he brought people in the past to faith in order to bring other people in the present to faith. And hopefully my life will have an impact on my children and my grandchildren and my great-great-grandchildren. And they'll look back and be like, I remember great-granddaddy Jeremiah and the faith that he had. You've told me about that faith, and I want to have a faith like his. I hope that's what people will say. But nonetheless, my faith is going to influence others. And so others will hopefully, as they celebrate All Saints, they remember me. But we also remember the big, huge, influential saints throughout the church. So we think of guys like St. Augustine. We think of St. Athanasius, St. Ignatius, St. Polycarp. Big names that a lot of people know about influential historical figures whose works have affected the church at large. There have been hundreds and hundreds of major influential writers throughout the church who have influenced the church for good. And we remember people like that because they have impacted our faith. You can't say that you've never read C.S. Lewis without it affecting you in some way, without it helping grow your faith in some way, or Augustine, or G.K. Chesterton, or any number of saints who have passed on into glory, who have had an influence on your faith. And so we remember all of these people who have influenced the church, whether in huge ways, great and glorious ways, like many of the church fathers would do, or even some of our 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th century writers, Reformation writers who have influenced the church at large. We remember all these figures and we say thank you to God for those figures, but we also say thank you to God and reflect on those believers who have gone on.
that we personally have been connected to in one way or another that we have a personal relationship with. And I think All Saints Day is important for us to recognize how God has influenced my faith and your faith through various believers in all times and all places and including believers that you know personally who have passed on. People who had a wonderful faith, had a warm faith, had some kind of faith that played a role in helping you walk the faith that you now have, that God worked through them His Spirit was in them just as His Spirit is in you when you have faith and changed you through them because the Spirit was working between the two of you. And so All Saints Day is an opportunity for us to step back and acknowledge the grand and glorious work of God through His people to influence His people. That's what All Saints Day is ultimately about, honoring the sacrifices of previous saints to make known the gospel to others through their words, through their writings, through their lives, through their vocations, and whatever capacity that they lived on this earth, whatever things they did, they made the faith known through those actions. And it ripples down to me today, to you today. It ripples down to your children and to your future grandchildren even. What these saints have done and what you do as a saint will ripple down. And it's good to step back and honor these saints and recognize their effect on the church. And that's what we do on All Saints Day. We ask and look at these saints that have gone before us and acknowledge the good work that God did in them and through them by the work of Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And so to wrap up this video, I want, us to, I want you to hear this collect. This is a collect for All Saints Day. And it's a beautiful collect because it reminds us of how all the church has been knit together. All the church is the body of Christ brought together The past church, the present church, the future church. The church militant here on earth still living and striving against sin in this world. And the church victorious who has gone on to heaven before us today because they died in the faith. And so here's this collect for All Saints Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. So there you have it. That's our collect. It's reminding us that we are united to those past saints and that we desire to live lives that are reflective of the lives that they lived, that we would walk in the paths that God laid before them, that we likewise would walk those same paths and that God would work through us as he has worked through them. And so I hope that this helps you understand why so many people enjoy and love All Saints Day and celebrate All Saints Day. And maybe I'll make a video about other connections between All Saints Day and Halloween and why we dress up and why we do things like that. I haven't decided if I want to make that video or not, Uh, but I might do that to help us remember why Halloween is not a bad thing. And that it can be good to prepare through Halloween for All Saints Day. But that's a whole other video. But for this video, All Saints Day is important because it reminds us to remember those who came before us, whose work and faith have influenced us and the church everywhere. And so may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen.